Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be learning about the ulna. The ulna. The ulna is the medial bone of the forearm. It is homologous with the fibula of the lower limb. It has an upper end, a lower end and a shaft. Now how do we determine the side of an ulna? The upper end is hook-like with its concavity facing forwards. The lateral border is sharp and crest-like. The lower end has a styloid process that faces medially. Now, if we try keeping this ulna on our left hand, we will notice that the upper end, which is hook-like, is facing anteriorly, but the interosseous border or the lateral border, which is sharp and crest-like, is facing medially which shouldn't be the case. So we keep this on our right hand and we notice that the upper end is facing anteriorly, the interosseous border is facing laterally and the styloid process is facing medially, that is right here. So we come to the conclusion that this is the ulna of the right side. Now let's learn about the features of the ulna. The upper end of the ulna has an olecranon process a coronoid process, a trochlear notch and a radial notch. The olecranon process projects upwards from the shaft. It has a superior surface, an anterior surface, posterior surface, a lateral surface and a medial surface. The anterior surface is articular and forms the upper part of the trochlear notch. The posterior surface is a triangular subcutaneous area that is separated from the skin by a bursa. The lateral surface is continuous with the posterior surface of the shaft of the ulna. The medial surface is continuous with the medial surface of the shaft of the ulna. And the superior surface in its posterior part is a roughened area. The coronoid process projects forwards from the shaft just below the olecranon process and has four surfaces the superior surface the anterior surface the lateral surface and the medial surface the superior surface forms the lower part of the trochlear notch the anterior surface is triangular and rough in its lower corner it forms the deltoid tuberosity the upper part of the lateral surface is marked by the radial notch for the head of the radius. The annular ligament is attached to the anterior and posterior margins of the notch. Below the notch, there is a depressed area to accommodate the radial tuberosity. It is limited posteriorly by a ridge called the supinator crest. This is the supinator crest. The medial surface is continuous with the medial surface of the shaft. The trochlear notch forms an articular surface that articulates with the trochlea of the humerus to form the elbow joint. The radial notch articulates with the head of the radius to form the superior radioulna joint. Now let's look at the shaft of the ulna. The shaft has three borders and three surfaces. This is the anterior border. This is the interosseous border or the lateral border. And this is the posterior border. This is the anterior surface. This is the medial surface and this is the posterior surface. The anterior border is thick and rounded. It begins from the medial side of the ulna tuberosity down to the medial side of the ulna styloid. The interosseous border is sharp in its middle two-fourths. Inferiorly, it can be traced to the lateral side of the head while superiorly it can be traced up to the supinator crest. The posterior border is subcutaneous and it begins from the apex of the triangular subcutaneous area on the posterior surface of the olecranon process down to the base of the styloid. The anterior surface lies between the interosseous and the anterior border. It presents a nutrient foramen in its upper part. The medial surface lies between the anterior and the posterior borders, this is the medial surface. The posterior surface lies between the posterior and the interosseous border. It is subdivided into three areas by two lines. The lower end of the ulna 
has a head and a styloid process. The head articulates with the ulnar notch of the radius to form the inferior radio ulnar joint. It is separated from the wrist joint by an articular disc. The ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve lie on the anterior aspect of the head of the ulna. The styloid process projects downwards from the lower end of the ulna. Posteriorly, there is a groove between the styloid process and the head for the passage of the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon. Now before I start with the attachments on the ulna, please note that the red color represents the origin of muscles, the blue color indicates the insertion of muscles and the green color represents the attachments of ligaments and joint capsules. So let's begin with the attachments on the upper part of the ulna that is on the olecranon process and the coronoid process. Looking at the attachments on the olecranon process, the triceps is inserted into the rough posterior part of the superior surface of the olecranon process. The anterior surface is covered by a bursa. This muscle you see here is the triceps brachii. The medial surface of the ulna gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor carpi ulnaris. This is the flexor digitorum profundus and this is the flexor carpi ulnaris. The lateral surface of the olecranon process gives insertion to the anconius. This is the anconius muscle. Now let's look at the attachments on the coronoid process of the ulna. The anterior surface and the ulna tuberosity gives insertion to the brachialis. This is the brachialis muscle. The ulna tuberosity also gives attachment to the oblique cord. This is the oblique cord. The medial margin of the coronoid process gives origin to the ulna head of the flexor digitorum superficialis from a tubercle at the upper end of the medial margin that is right here. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis. The medial margin also gives origin to the ulna head of the pronator teres right here. These are the two slips of the pronator teres. The medial surface of the coronoid process gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus. The supinator crest and the triangular area in front of the supinator crest on the lateral surface of the coronoid process gives origin to the supinator muscle. This is the supinator. The annular ligament of the superior radial ulna joint is attached to the two margins of the radial notch of the ulna. This is the annular ligament. The capsular ligament of the elbow joint is attached to the margins of the trochlear notch that is to the olecranon process and the coronoid process. This is the capsule of the elbow joint. Now let's look at the attachments on the shaft of the ulna. The interosseous border gives attachment to the interosseous membrane. The posterior border gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus through an aponeurosis as you can see here. This aponeurosis also gives origin to the flexor carpi ulnaris and the extensor carpi ulnaris. This muscle you see here is the extensor carpi ulnaris. The anterior surface gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus in its upper three-fourths and origin to the pronator quadratus from an oblique ridge on the lower part of the anterior surface. This is the pronator quadratus. The medial surface gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus from its upper three-fourths. The posterior surface gives origin to the abductor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis longus and the extensor indices. This is the abductor pollicis longus. This is the extensor indices. The ulna collateral ligament of the wrist is attached to the styloid process. This is the ulna collateral ligament. Now let's summarize the attachments on the ulna. The olecranon process gives insertion to the triceps on a superior surface. The medial surface gives origin to the FTP and the FCU, that is the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor carpi ulnaris. The lateral surface of the olecranon process gives insertion to the anconius. Now the coronoid process. The anterior surface of the coronoid process gives insertion to the brachialis. The ulna tuberosity gives insertion to the brachialis as well as attachment to the oblique cord. The medial margin of the coronoid process gives origin to the FTS and the PT, that is the flexor digitorum superficialis and the pronator teres. 
the medial surface gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus, the supinator crest, as well as the area in front of the supinator crest gives origin to the supinator. The radial notch gives attachment to the annular ligament. The margin of the trochlea notch gives attachment to the capsular ligament of the elbow joint. The interosseous border of the shaft of the ulna gives attachment to the interosseous membrane. The posterior border gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus, the flexor carpi ulnaris, the extensor carpi ulnaris through an aponeurosis. The anterior surface gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus in its upper three fourth. It also gives origin to the pronator quadratus. The medial surface of the shaft of the ulna gives origin to the flexor digitorum profundus in its upper three fourth. The posterior surface gives origin to the abductor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis longus, the extensor indices. Finally, the styloid process gives attachment to the ulnar collateral ligament. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.